Kicking off this list in fifth place, we have the crappiest entry on the list, scientifically known as coprolite. The word coprolite originates from a combination of the Greek words kopros, which means dung, and lithos, meaning rock, with this type of fossils being amongst some of the oldest collected throughout history to gain knowledge of species that came before us humans. The specimens that have been found to date from megalodons are spiral shaped, indicating that the shark's lower intestines would have been in the shape of a corkscrew, with a spiral external valve similar to lamniform sharks. One specific example found in Beaufort County, South Carolina, measured at least 5 inches in length. And hey, if you're looking for a unique paperweight, you can buy one of your very own in an online auction for under 100 bucks. <laughs> in fourth place, we have the Panama Nurseries. Discovered in 2010 and believed to be 10 million years old, this finding led to the first thorough study of the youngest in the species. Fossil evidence from the area suggests that millions of years ago, the region had shallow shorelines, warm water, and flourishing marine life, which would have made it a perfect place for baby sharks to thrive. Lead author on the project, Catalina Pimiento, has been quoted as stating that scientists were able to interpret the ancient protection strategies used specifically on the fossil record in the area. This discovery was solidified based on on an analysis done on a collection of 25 megalodon teeth which were discovered in the same area that were deemed to be too small to belong to fully grown members of the species. Nurseries would provide a safe haven for the baby sharks to grow, shield them from predators, and protect them as they learn to hunt. This practice was not exclusive to the megalodon species, with modern day shark breeds such as cat sharks and great whites adopting similar ways of raising their young. The nurseries would typically be found in warm shallow waters such as coral reefs and mangroves, places that could offer an abundance of food. This discovery also offers a newer theory as to how the species went extinct over 3 million years ago. With the knowledge that megalodons thrived in warmer temperatures as the climate began to cool around 5 million years ago, it would have reduced the availability of suitable nurseries for the sharks to raise their young. Without good nurseries, baby sharks wouldn't have survived, which may have helped drive the species to extinction. As of 2023, five potential nurseries have been discovered, being in the Atlantic, Caribbean, and Pacific basins, with fossils discovered ranging from 3 to 16 million years ago. Number three, new teeth. Okay, so I thought these things were just like hung up on a wall in a museum somewhere. Nope, they're finding these things like every day. Jonathan Valentine found his first megalodon tooth after just like 10 minutes of one of his most recent dives. The fossil hunter has found several huge fresh teeth from the extinct megalodon in North Carolina last month. Jonathan Valentine, who runs the Digging Science website, said in a recent video that his haul included a tooth that was seven inches long and another that was six inches. Dude, that's the size of like your whole hand and like one tooth. One in a mouth of hundreds. That's a big set of jaws. Megalodon tooth finds usually measure between three and five inches, but our boy here got lucky with these two big tooths. According to the Florida Museum of Natural History, on his North Carolina trip, Valentine explored coastlines that form bays and canals that used to be deep water ocean floors millions of years ago. Huge megalodon teeth can be found in these embayments. Florida is typically where he would explore to find megalodon teeth and Ice Age fossils, but these two giant gems were apparently laying in what was a shallow nursery during the Miocene period, where big female megalodons would come in and have their babies and then ship back out to sea. Those babies would have a variety of different foods to eat and they wouldn't have to worry about other deep water predators being so close to shore. They'd be able to just chill out, grow humongous, and then cruise into the ocean at their own pace. Apparently these waters in North Carolina would be like a nursery and then a feeding frenzy on local whales. Yeah, Valentine said, quote, holy that thing's huge. That thing is insane. That's a big tooth. Wow, that's a pretty good start to this trip. Yeah, I'd say so, dude. You found one of the biggest teeth ever found and in North Carolina. Also, isn't it scarier that they weren't like in the middle of the Atlantic somewhere on a ship? They were like on the shores of North Carolina. Terrifying. Number two, bigger in the cold. A new study reveals that the very, I hope, extinct megalodon or megatooth shark grew to larger sizes in cooler environments than in warmer areas. Kind of goes against what you think when you think about sharks, right? Florida, Bahamas, Mexico, yeah, nope. Yeah, they could be anywhere in the Atlantic or even up by the North Pole. DePaul University's paleobiology took a look through time and space at the body size patterns of the megalodon. In reality, this species is only known from teeth and vertebrae that we found from fossil records. We don't really have a good idea of what it's actually girth looked like. Accepted scientifically though, the thing was at least 50 feet, maybe bigger. The new study re-examined published records of megalodon teeth along with their estimated total body lengths. In the mid 1880s, German biologist Carl Bergman came up with a theory that larger animals thrive in cooler climates because their size, naturally, would help them retain heat more. Therefore, the bigger fish would be in the cold. I catch drift. Walruses, whales, I get it. 
I get you. Seems like this at first that the impression that scientists were under was the colder the area, the bigger the animal, therefore the longer and better it would thrive. However, with new studies, it shows that mostly of the unidentified nursery areas that the Megalodon liked are all located near the equator in warmer waters, making it even smaller than possibly the ones that were swimming in the cold. It's possible that Megs were actually much smaller than the nursery's teeth found in the colder areas, making the cold therapy theory true? It's hard to tell with this creature because like, it swam mostly wherever it wanted. Cold, warm, it didn't care. If it was hungry, it was coming for you. The result of the university indicates that the modern climate change is rapidly accelerating marine habitat shifts to more polar latitudes in apex predators, such as sharks and whales, up near really, really cold areas. This would also lend evidence to the specific diet of the megalodon, which was mostly large whales, who also live in the deep, dark cold. DePaul's conclusion is that not all geographically different megalodon individuals grew to gigantic sizes equally, but the colder creatures were also much, much larger swimming in the cold water, ultimately securing Bergman's OG rule. All right, so the Keys trip is back on then. Warm water for the win. They don't swim there. Or they do both. Oh. And the number one spot, alive? Could we have just found evidence on sonar to prove that there's something absolutely terrifying and massive still swimming the seas? We've found teeth in recent years and last month that have been relatively fresh. We've seen Google Earth blurs signifying that the waters can be really deceiving. Now, researchers think that they caught a little glimpse at something very weird and very big. Apparently sonar showed a 50 foot shark nearing a boat off New England waters. Shark researchers are accustomed to surprises, but the Atlantic shark Shark Institute was a little taken aback when something resembling an extinct megalodon shark appeared to just swim under them on sonar. Of course, flabbergasted after picking up what appeared to be a massive 50 foot shark sized blurb, the sea scanners underneath the boat were fritzing. An Instagram post detailing the alleged discovery is currently making waves on a recent shark research trip. Researchers said, quote, we were amused to see the shape appear on our fish finder for several minutes. Researchers from the Atlantic Shark Institute detected this anomaly in an undisclosed area. Unfortunately, the scientists' excitement quickly faded after the monster just turned out to be a massive monster school of fish. Whew, just sitting in the same spot for a while. Yeah, thank God. Researchers said, quote, We waited for more of the rods to go off. However, much to our disappointment, the shape just started to transition into a large school of Atlantic mackerel that hung around the boat for about 15 minutes. That's terrifying. Yo, can you imagine just a massive murky shadow under your boat for just minutes on end not moving? Just sitting there. I'm pretty sure I would just start playing the Titanic music. You know what I mean? It's been a pleasure, gentlemen. Okay, so no actual Megs caught yet, thank God. But it seems like we keep finding these remains, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but not necessarily a good thing. The cool thing, however, is each month there's more and more studies actively searching for this thing. To be honest, I hope it's gone, gone forever. 10 foot hammerheads are scary enough, aren't they? Like eyes on the side of their heads? That's terrifying. Number five, huge teeth. Without a bit of fossilized evidence, we may never have had any proof of the Megalodon at all, unless you count the 2018 Jason Statham movie. But thankfully, this ferocious sea monster was leaving a lot of its teeth behind. Megalodon even translates loosely to big tooth, give you a sense of how important those things were. One of our earliest and most well-known reports and signs of life from this once impressive creature stem from a story from the British survey ship, the HMS Challenger, wherein two teeth were collected from near the sea floor in 1875 while on a survey expedition past Tahiti. The teeth collected were illuminating. A single megalodon tooth measures anywhere from five to seven inches long. Compare that with an average great white shark tooth, which measures a little bit under three inches, and you start to understand where some of our fascination with the megalodon stems from. Interestingly enough though, efforts to carbon date the teeth reveal that they were dated about 10,000 to 25,000 years ago, instead of the estimates from scientists saying the megalodon went extinct 2.6 million years ago. Now could this be the paper trail suggesting the megalodon is still swimming around somewhere out there? It's difficult to properly study megalodon fossils as the only parts of them that fossilize are their teeth and a bit of their vertebrae, keep note of that for the rest of the video, as the rest of them are made of mostly cartilage, like most sharks. However, their teeth are found fairly commonly, with Florida being one of the best hunting spots if you're ever looking to take home some megalodon teeth as a souvenir, maybe make into a really sweet necklace. It's actually even the official state fossil of North Carolina. And if you're learning now that the states have fossils, you are not alone because I did not know that every state had a fossil. Bit of a tangent, but you really should look the list up because they are not equal even a little bit. 
Colorado has the Stegosaurus as their official fossil, and then Connecticut has footprints as their fossil. I don't, totally unrelated, but it just seems completely unfair. Now, while I've got you here listening to me yammering on about fossils, if you've been liking these videos, why not hammer the old like button? Helps us out a lot and costs you nothing but a little bit of finger stress. Number four, fish finder. Now, even though there is a great deal of evidence that the Meg is long since extinct and hasn't swam through our waters in a long time, that really has not stopped us from trying to find it. Scientists like tying up loose ends, and I know if there was even a possibility of a giant shark swimming around out there, I would like to put a pin in that. Worst case scenario, you never find the thing, and oh no, you get to take a bunch of beautiful tours of the ocean with all your scientist buddies. Best case scenario, you find proof of a once thought extinct legendary species and get heralded as a pioneer in your field, so really, it's a win-win to keep hunting for it. Earlier this month, the Atlantic Shark Institute thought that they got closer than anybody else. A routine survey operation was disturbed when on the fish finder, a scan showing what looked to be a 50 foot long titan of a shark appeared on the radar. The team thought they had finally found it for real. And I mean, can you blame them? The image that showed up on their scanner looks like the last thing you would see in a shark horror movie. The researchers, presumably frozen in fear, analyzed the scan until it started to move after 15 minutes. But before they could start writing any of their wills, their fears were put to rest when it turned out the shape was actually just a school of mackerel pulling a pretty good Atlantic prank. The team said that although the Megalodon is recorded as having gone extinct three million years ago, that for a few minutes they themselves were confused and thought maybe it had returned. I think it definitely says something if even the brightest uh, scientific shark experts can be scared into thinking the Meg is real just by seeing a particularly convincing shadow while out on the water. Number three, Megalodon 3D. Okay, so personally, I've never stood next to a Megalodon model myself. However, I have stood next to lots of yellow school buses in my life. And I know that uh, it's just a bit bigger and a bit fatter than that. So, yeah, I get it. It was huge. But I don't really get it, you know? It's hard without depth perception. Well, lucky for us, the past few discoveries of sister species and bigger and bigger bones and teeth have nudged scientists in the direction of building a life-size model, complete to scale. Fully stocked, complete with jaws and bones and everything. Just so you can visually picture how many actual human beings this thing can fit inside its mouth. Right in front of your six-year-old. Just this last year, designers and computer biologists mocked up a rough 3D model and flirted with slapping it on together. Now. A pretty real megalodon shark is now floating above heads at the American Museum of Natural History in New York. Researchers used a megalodon vertebrae column from Belgium, a tooth from the US, and a contorum cranium, the cartilage equivalent of the skull from a great white shark, to help build this 3D model. Then they used a full body scan of a great white shark to estimate how flesh would then sit on a megalodon skeleton. A team led by Jack Cooper, paleobiologist at Swansea University, used 3D modeling from a rare, well-preserved Meg spinal column to whiteboard some numbers about the shark's movement and behavior. A complete 3D model. By comparing the figure to modern sharks, they were able to understand better of the shark's swimming speed, stomach value, and calorie needs. We just learned about an entire animal we've never met from scanning microbes on a tooth. Like, and now we have a giant model. Science rules. It would have been almost like 60 feet, weighing somewhere around 180,000 pounds. Like, why? Just why? Number two, supernovas. It's a no-brainer that sharks are affected by climate change. Butterfly effect, you know? You take some algae out of the north and then some ant species in Lithuania starves, which makes someone else starve. It's called the ecosystem. And sometimes anomalies happen that alter and change that for us without our consent. As in mass coronal ejections. Basically terrifying solar flares that mess up our atmosphere. And this actually might have been one of the reasons that this ancient mommy shark do 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 is no longer with us. About 2.6 million years ago, an oddly bright light arrived above a prehistoric sky and lingered there for weeks and months. It was a supernova, some 150 light years away from Earth. A new study suggests that within a few hundred years, well after the supernova had faded from Earth, a tsunami of cosmic energy from that star explosion reached our planet. The rain of particles showered our atmosphere and the researchers say touching off climate change and triggering more of a mass extinction of everything large in the ocean, including our friend here, the Megalodon. In the Journal of Astrobiology, Adrian Mellet, a professor of physics and astronomy at the University of Kansas, said that recent papers about ancient seabed deposits of iron isotopes provided evidence and backed up the timing and distance that the specific supernova had. 36% of the largest marine animals like sharks, whales, turtles back then 
all disappeared. The extinction was concentrated in coastal waters where larger organisms would have caught greater radiation from the cosmic muons. They think basically the bigger the creature was, the bigger the increase of radiation would have been. I mean, it makes sense, right? Like, what could have killed this thing off? It was top dog, it should still be around, right? They couldn't have run out of food, it's not like they were hunted out of extinction. Just when science is terrifying, it has a way of balancing things out, doesn't it? With something way more terrifying, like a star exploding. And number one, relocation. Okay, so apparently sharks keep it the same for like millions of years, and then all of a sudden just pull a fast one on us. Like saltwater sharks in history have been known to just wash up in like Lake Erie all of a sudden. If you've seen the news or Twitter recently with the amount of disaster floods we have right now with Hurricane Ian in Florida, apparently it's blowing sharks everywhere. This is kind of harmless and I'm sure they're going to end up back where they belong, but Arctic deep sharks are now being found in the Caribbean. Hey Kyle, uh, <laughs> it's a shark, what's the big deal? Uh, they have a routine, people. They stick to one area and habitat for like zillions of years. We're in a weird twilight zone right now where sharks are ready for an upgrade. Apparently the size of the sharks in the past couple of years have grown a couple inches as well. That's like us losing two toes all of a sudden for evolution's sake. It's not normal. It's not just like calories in, calories out type deal. Their body needs to adapt. For example, Greenland sharks are the longest living vertebrates in the world, capable of living up to 400 plus years. That puts us back to about 1572 when Queen Elizabeth I was ruling, when these things were born. This past spring, scientists were able to get up close and personal with said Greenland shark, but found it just off the coast of Belize. Finding anything thousands of miles from its usual hunting grounds is unusual, but an ancient frigid water dwelling shark in shallow hot Caribbean water? It's a little concerning. Devanshi Kasana, a marine biologist at Florida International University within the Predator Ecology and Conservation Lab, first thought that what she was looking at was a six gill shark, which is known to live in the really deep warm waters. Nope, a shark from the other side of the globe just enjoying a hot bath swimming. So are they evolving? Like what's happening here? The 400 year old cold shark just decided it wants to mix it up, I guess. Horrifying. Horrifying on all counts. Number five, the New England sighting. In May of 2021, a ship of tourists off the coast of Cape Cod saw an amazing sight circling around them. They took video of the massive aquatic animal and posted it on TikTok, where it got a huge amount of views. It totally went viral. One of the people in the video watching the shark can be heard asking, is that a megalodon? Of course, the debate was picked up in the comments, with several people being convinced that this video was proof prehistoric predator was really circling the boat. Marine biologists were less convinced and came forward saying that the shark was most likely a Cathorinus maximus, or a basking shark. Basking sharks are some of the largest sharks that are still living and typically reach a length of 26 feet, with some even reaching the 30 foot mark. They are often mistaken for great white sharks, perhaps due to most people's frame of reference for great white sharks being the movie Jaws, where the shark reaches a staggering 25 feet long. Despite most great whites reaching a a maximum length of 16 feet, and the largest on record getting to 20 feet. Despite sharks' reputation as relentless killing machines due to movies, basking sharks survive off of a diet of plankton and are essentially harmless to people. In fact, we are a greater danger to them, and this once thriving species are now an endangered species due to them being hunted for use in shark fin soup. If you haven't realized yet, most Meg sightings turn out to be other sharks, and most of this video is actually just going to be me talking about different kinds of sharks, but that's what happens when a channel does like a million videos on megalodons. You run out of material eventually. Number four, the sea scanner sighting. Another potential sighting from 2022 was made by researchers from a non-profit organization called the Atlantic Shark Institute. They work primarily in research and preservation of sharks. But one day, they saw something they thought was impossible. While using their fish finder sonar, they saw a massive shape coming towards their boat. They took a photo of the large moving mass and realized that whatever was coming towards towards them was almost 50 feet long, thinking in their excitement that they had perhaps discovered one of the long extinct megalodons. As the shape got closer, it began changing shape, and the researchers were forced to laugh at themselves as they realized that what they were seeing was actually a normal school of Atlantic mackerel. I'm sure no one here wants to hear about mackerels, so instead, let's take a bit of a leap and talk about mackerel sharks. Mackerel sharks, or lamniforms as they are more officially referred to, are what many people think of when they picture a shark in their heads. 
They are known for having a higher body temperature than the water in which they are swimming, and can be identified by having dorsal fins, an anal fin, five gill slits, and a mouth that extends to behind their eyes. They are not a species of shark so much as a category of them, with some qualifying sharks being the infamous great white shark, as well as sand sharks and thresher sharks. One of the more unusual mackerel sharks is the Megachasma pelagios, otherwise known as the Megamouth shark. Megamouths are deep water sharks known for their large gaping mouths and large rubbery lips. They typically grow to be about 16 feet long and like basking sharks, feed on plankton by filtering water in its mouth to catch plankton in jellyfish. They are rarely seen by humans, with less than 100 megamouths being caught or seen since their discovery in 1976. It may not be a megalodon, but it's a something. So you know, close enough. Number 3. Curious Shark Another clip posted to TikTok. This one shows us a very brave great white shark who just wants to know exactly what all the commotion is about as it comes up to greet a couple of sailors by the side of a boat, saying hello the way only a shark knows how, by gnawing on just about everything it can get its teeth on. The shark in this video is massive, looking big enough to appear in my nightmares tonight and every night after that. Especially when it starts to make its way up to the boat's motor, thrashing about, chewing on everything to see if maybe, just maybe, any of this is edible. It gets far too close for comfort for me. I mean, already being face to face with a shark is one thing, and this guy is basically inches away from this thing's mouth. And who's to say what could have happened if this massive predator prapped itself even a little bit more onto the surface of the boat? It'd be the captain now, that's for sure. It's a scary reminder that when it comes down to it, a shark is a wild, uncontrollable animal. And a safe as we think we are on the water, we always have to remember who actually runs things down there. We're coming onto their turf. Now the people filming this video have got some fantastic composure, I've got to say, laughing through the whole thing as if there isn't a prehistoric sized sea monster flopping around trying to eat their means of travel. That's the kind of confidence I'd like to get someday. Either that or it's that nervous laughter you do when you know you're in serious trouble and you're too scared to react properly. I kind of suspect it's the second one. Swimming in at number two spot is this TikTok clip posted us from Shark. Shark ABC ABC, who from the name alone I have to imagine is pretty into sharks and shark based content. In this short clip we see an absolute titan of a shark swimming up to check in on a bunch of surprised tourists who are all huddled together on a boat in a way that's making me extremely nervous. Just from looking at the shark swimming up slowly to the boat I start to sweat. The thing is practically the size of the boat itself. It looks like it could upend the whole thing and send everyone into the water just by accident. Maybe it's just everyone crammed onto that tiny little boat that's really getting to me. You know what these people need when you see a giant shark in the water? I've been waiting all video to say this, you're gonna need a bigger boat. Worth it, we did it. Okay, end the video here, I hit my peak. <laughs> Luckily, despite all my worrying, no one in this clip was hurt as the shark was just checking them out, probably scouting them, letting all this little sharky buddies know for later that if you swim up real cute and let the humans take pictures of you, it makes it real easy to get the drop on them. I just don't trust them. And finally, at number one, the beach stalker. Our number one clip comes to us from Dubai. The video captured shows a bunch of tourists and locals enjoying a day on the beach when they'd be disturbed by something a little fishy, or rather something big and fishy and sharky to be specific. I'll stop beating around the bush, it's a giant shark that came up to the beach. That's, that's what I'm trying to imply. A shark was spotted stalking its prey on the coast of Kite Beach, a beautiful beach popular with the tourists. The shark can be seen almost sneaking up on the beachgoers. How? I'm not quite sure, usually the music cues gives this sort of thing away. While most of the beachgoers have the good enough sense to hustle up onto the sand away from the shark, surprisingly slowly though I've gotta say, this one lady saunters out of here like it's nothing. I've seen people get out of a pool faster cause somebody peed in the water, let alone that there's a shark pacing up and down trying to decide which one of you looks like it'll make the best appetizer. The thing swims up and down like it's scanning the buffet. Scarier still than that is the woman who's caught out in the water between a shark and the hard place. We see the lifeguard charging in to try and keep the situation cool and hats off to the guy because that's more cool cool and collected than I could possibly be, but that's why he's a lifeguard and I'm a YouTube host. Luckily, no one was hurt during this and everyone got themselves off the beach and made it out safely, but I'd bet you anything it was probably a bit of time before any of these beach bums ever made it way back to the water. 
Woof. Number five, new species? So apparently there's a new genus and species that's been found. I love it when they make announcements like this, but only with dinosaurs, you know what I mean? It also makes things way more scary, doesn't it? Scientists have discovered the remains of a mysterious truck-sized shark which swam the coastlines of the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans around 20 million years ago. That's not a great white or a meg. The newly discovered species is a close relative of the megalodon we're used to seeing and the ancient ancestor of today's great white sharks. Perfect, a hybrid shark. That's what I'm hearing, right? Isn't there like four movies about this already? Like this is Jurassic Park 5, Megalodons in New Jersey. I swear I've seen this. Like we know where this is going. Fortunately for us, there's about 45 million years worth of a gap between all three, leaving scientists scratching their heads on how the shark even evolved. Like when did it die out or did it even die out? Could this be the new Megalodon sightings people have, but just like the new sister species? This new species has been named Megalolama paradoxodon. That's pretty Pretty sweet. There's gonna be a new metal band with that name soon, just wait. A brand new genus of its own as well. The species name, Paradox, refers to the fact that the shark emerged so suddenly in the geological record after appearing to have split from its closest relative around 45 million years earlier. A paradox. So it's like the daughter of a Meg and the grandmother of a great white. Only five of the species' teeth have been found in California, North Carolina, Japan, and Peru. Based on the remains, the researchers think that the shark grew to around five meters long, making it smaller than its relative, but still absolutely megalithic. Like almost a city bus size. Most importantly, the discovery tests our understanding of the shark family tree because the Megalodon and Megalolamna are so closely related, scientists are still arguing about the missing branches to said family tree. Yeah, that's horrifying, all right? Number four, origins. All right, let's take a deep dive here before we talk about these new fears that I've recently developed. Also, if you like what we do here on the channel, Hulk smash that like button. It really helps us out here. We like to keep it spooky around here, so let us know down in the comments what your biggest fear of the seven seas are. If it's creepy, if it's crawly and it swims, Send her over my way. Before these TikTok videos and Google Earth finds, the Megalodon was first written about in 1835 by Swiss-American geologist Louis Agassiz, who named the species Carcharodon Megalodon. He was the first one. He was the OG on the case. And of course, the first Megalodon teeth, such as those found by the HMS Challenger in 1873, were dated in 1959 by zoologist Vladimir Cherneski to be around 11,000 to 25,000 years old, popularizing claims of the Megalodon still hiding out there somewhere. Megalodons are thought to have reached at least 20 meters in length and lived from about 23 to 2 million years ago. The Meg, however, wouldn't be known by its scientific name until the late 1990s when scientists placed it in its own genus, Carcharoslis. Some paleontologists think that the Megalodon and modern white sharks evolved within the same lineage, but now, obviously with this new species found, it's kind of thrown off the family tree a tad. Yeah, they don't know if they should put it like near the ancients or like 60 million years years ago, Megatooth territory, or closer to what we see in the movie Jaws. So they're kind of confused. Somewhere in the middle, give or take, that's like a lot of wiggle room, you know? A lot of years there. In 2008, scientists conducted an experiment to determine the bite force of the great white shark to see what the megalodon could have done damage-wise. The largest great white recorded could produce 18,000 newtons of force versus the megalodon of 180,000 newtons of force. Plus all the shaking around sharks do to rip their food in half. Yeah, all of a sudden I understand the urgency of all these studies. That's horrifying. Coming in third place, I'd like to discuss what science has been able to establish based off of what we know from other sharks. It's believed that megalodon were a robust looking shark and would have had a similar build to the great white shark. The jaws would have been more blunt and wider than the great white. The fins would have also been similar in shape, but much thicker due to their size. Its chondrocranium or cartilage based skull would have had a blockier and more robust appearance than that of the great white. It would have had a pig eyed appearance with smaller deep set eyes. The tail fin would have been crescent shaped with a small anal fin and second dorsal fin, and there would have been a caudal keel present on either side of the tail fin for stability. Megalodon were officially the largest macro predatory shark that ever lived, reaching upwards of 67 feet in length. In 2020, a 2D model of a roughly 52 foot long megalodon was built to break down the specific measurements of the shark. They would have had a 15.3 feet long head, gill slits that were 4 foot 8 inches long, a 5 foot 4 dorsal fin, 10 foot long pectoral fins, and a 12 foot 8 inch tail fin. In 2022, a 3D model with the same basis as the 2020 study was built, resulting in a body mass estimate of 61.56 metric tons. At this size, they would 
would have needed to consume 98,175 calories per day, 20 times more than what an adult great white male requires. For comparison's sakes, human adults only need around 2,000 calories per day, so imagine the entire population of a town of about 50,000 people being swallowed whole each day. Adult males would have had a body mass of 12.6 to 33.9 metric tons, immature females would have been around 27.4 to 59.4 metric tons. As with all sharks, their skeletons were made of cartilage rather than bone. Ergo, most fossil specimens are poorly preserved, and that's if they're able to be recovered at all. To support their extremely large teeth, the jaws of the megalodon would have been more massive, stouter, and overall more strongly developed than those of the great white. It's believed that the largest of the species had jaws spanning roughly 6.6 .6 feet across, and scientists have said that they would have been able to open their mouths to a 75 degree angle. With fossils having been discovered around the globe, it's believed that they could tolerate temperatures between 1 to 24 degrees Celsius. Funny enough, same as most of my friends. They inhabited a wide range of marine environments, from shallow coastal waters to areas of coastal upwelling, swampy coastal lagoons, sandy littorals, and offshore deep water environments, along with exhibiting a transient lifestyle. The massive size of megalodons, combined with high speed swimming capacity and powerful jaws, made them an apex predator capable of consuming a broad spectrum of animals, and one of the most impressive predators to ever exist. A study focusing on calcium isotopes of extinct and extant elasmo branch sharks and rays revealed that megalodons were above even the great white shark in the food chain. Fossil evidence indicates that they preyed upon many species, such as dolphins, small whales, shark-toothed dolphins, sperm whales, bowhead whales, seals, sea turtles, and more. Megalodons were an opportunist and previsorous, and would likely have gone after smaller fish and other sharks, with many whale bones having been found with deep gashes likely made by their teeth. Over 75 various excavations have revealed megalodon teeth lying close to the chewed remains of whales and often in direct association with them. In second place, we have some rarer finds, actual vertebrae. The most notable example is a partially preserved vertebral column of a single specimen, excavated in the Antwerp Basin in Belgium back in 1926. It's made up of 150 vertebral centra, with the centra ranging from 2.2 to 6 inches in diameter. The shark's vertebrae may have gotten much bigger, and scrutiny of the specimen revealed that it had a higher vertebral count than specimens of any known shark, possibly over 200 centra, only the great white approaching it in count. Matthew Bonin, professor of biology at Stockton University, was a co-author on a paper detailing one megalodon shark's story and its dark secret revealing how it grew to be so large before birth. Bonner read the CT scans of three of the fossil vertebrae from this grouping, believing this megalodon to have passed 15 million years ago. The story they told was that the shark likely ate a sibling while still in its mother's uterus. It was born at 2 meters long, lived 46 years, and reached a maximum length of around 30 feet. Another partially preserved vertebral column of a megalodon was excavated from the Graham Formation in Denmark in 1983 and is made up of 20 vertebral centra, with the centra ranging from 4 to 9 inches in diameter. Shark vertebrae are made up of calcified cartilage, which is not the rubbery cartilage at the end of your nose or in your ears, but instead a special type of cartilage that has minerals in it, so it's more likely to be preserved, which is why they were able to be fossilized. In our first place, the moment you've all been waiting for, the teeth. Seeing as the literal definition of megalodon is big tooth, how could that be anywhere on this list other than the number one spot? Megalodons had four kinds of teeth in their jaws, anterior, intermediate, lateral, and posterior. Their front teeth are fairly symmetrical and do not point messially, so the side of the tooth towards the midline of the jaws where the left and right jaws meet. Diagnostic characteristics of the teeth include a triangular shape, powerful structure, large size, fine serrations, a lack of lateral denticles, and a visible V-shaped neck, which is where the root would meet the crown with the teeth meeting the jaw at a steep angle, similar once again to, you guessed it, the great white shark. The tooth was anchored by connective tissue fibers, and the roughness of the base would have added to mechanical strength. The lingual side of the tooth, which would have faced the tongue, was convex, and the other side of that tooth, known as the labial side, was slightly convex or flat. The anterior teeth were almost perpendicular to the jaw and symmetrical, whereas the posterior teeth were slanted and asymmetrical. Megalodon teeth can measure over several inches in slant height, so diagonal length, and are the largest of any known shark species. Remind us once again that they were the largest of all macropredatory sharks. In 1989, a nearly complete set of megalodon teeth were discovered in Saitama, Japan. Another nearly complete associated megalodon dentition was excavated from the Yorktown formations in the United States and served as the basis of a jaw reconstruction of a megalodon at the National Museum of Natural History. Based on these discoveries, an artificial dental formula was put together in 1996 to help with building recreations and estimating the overall size of these massive beings. I'd quote it here, but I promise y'all don't 
want me repeating mathematical equations I don't understand. Just ask my high school math teachers if you don't believe me. <laughs> they had over 250 teeth in their jaws, which were spread out over five rows. A single row is estimated to have been made up of 46 front teeth. A single row is estimated to have been made up of 46 front row teeth, 24 in the upper jaw, and 22 in the lower jaw. The reason so many teeth have been recovered is because like all sharks, they would replace their teeth as they grew or as the teeth became worn or damaged. New teeth are continually grown in a groove in the shark's mouth and the skin acts as a conveyor belt to move the teeth forward into new positions. Younger sharks would place their teeth more often than older ones, similar to most other beings. We don't have exact data on the rate teeth would have been replaced just yet, we can safely assume that an adult megalodon would have shed thousands of teeth in its lifetime. The teeth were also serrated, which would have improved efficiency in cutting through flesh or bone. Megalodon teeth are the most common fossil found from the species and can be easily acquired for your personal collection. Prices range from $12 to over several thousand dollars in online auctions. Number 5. Riley's Tooth Eight-year-old Riley Gracely of Pennsylvania discovered something very, very old recently. Okay, come on, we know where this is going. It's a tooth, okay? He found a tooth, a very old tooth. A prehistoric tooth and a prehistoric discovery to say the least and that just happened last month in August. But he's no stranger to spotting fossilized teeth of course as the family makes it an annual getaway to get out, get some fresh air and try and dig up the find of a century. The long extinct Carcharoslus angustitans however, a megatooth brother species of shark who swam next to the infamous Meg species. During their visit to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, Riley and his parents were excavating and fossil hunting at a very well preserved, well known fossil excursion near Somerville when the boys stumbled upon this perfectly preserved five inch extinct shark tooth. Dad had this to say, we vacation in Myrtle Beach every summer so from the time that Riley and his brother Colin could walk we've been into searching for these treasures on the beach. Riley's collection is still in its early stages so he's keeping it for now but who knows in time it would be nice for others to enjoy it too. Ah, that's cool. The tooth was identified by the matching of cusps on each side of the tooth and DNA processing. Due to its shape and condition, the find is likely worth thousands of dollars. Collectors call it the find of a lifetime, but Riley Gracely said he's not too sure what he's going to do with it yet. Buddy, I'm not going to lie, sell it for college funds. Just trust me, 20 million year old cousin of the Meg? Auction house gonna take that off your hands, no problem. Number four, Royal Teeth. As always, dudes, if you dig what we do here on Top 5 Scary, click that like button. Help us out on our end or throw a comment down below for us. Do you think this thing is still swimming around out there or is this like long gone? The oceans are pretty big. When famous historian and biologist Sir David Attenborough visited the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge last month at Kensington Palace, he brought a very, very old surprise for their son, Prince George. I mean, what surprise doesn't this child already have, you know? Well, apparently a huge megalodon tooth David found in Malta in the mid 1960s. And just make sure you take real good care of it. Oh, there it goes, and now it's broken. Seems all fun and outdoorsy, right? And a lovely present for our maybe once future king and other future king. But the Maltese government made a statement that made people think a little bit longer about this innocent gift. Reporters have brought to light the importance of historic valuables farmed and mined from the Malta area and this is a perfect example of finders keepers. The Times of Malta reported that Culture Minister Jose Herrera said that he planned to get the conversation started on reclaiming the tooth from the young royal and returning it to Malta. Malta was a former British colony so the fact that it could go on display among other treasures in the country's national collection is definitely worth considering. In the Middle Ages, many people believed shark teeth were magical talismans and called them tongue stones. Hundreds of years ago, shark teeth from Malta were among the very first fossils to be correctly aligned and interpreted as being related to the shark creature. That's pretty sick. And that's history right there, so we need to respect that. I'm not really sure how that's going to work with things found in the water, like is it pirate code at the time, international water type stuff. Either or, I think it's a good conversation to have. If the treasures and archaeological finds are found in said country pertaining to said people, is it said country's property? What do you think? Number three, whale bite. Although the megalodon was one of the biggest creatures swimming and splashing around in its heyday, these days our king of the ocean is the blue whale, the biggest creature in the world. Weighing as much as 10 elephants, a whale is a bit more than any shark could chew. In 2021, the carcass of a blue whale washed up on a Cape Town beach in South Africa. Locals were stumped because the whale in question happened to be missing almost half of it from a gigantic bite. Like a gigantic bite. Naturally, speculation ran wild. I mean, what could have possibly caused a bite of that caliber? 
outside the very serious and strong scientific possibility of Godzilla munching around looking for a late night snack. Wouldn't happen to be another school of mackerel all working in tandem, would it? Or could it be our favorite elusive cryptid rearing his head, the Megalodon? Scientists and researchers were scrambling trying to find answers as to what could have caused this. The bite marks were massive, and it was unclear just from initial studies what the attacking creature was. It was covered in lacerations and bite marks all the way down to its tail. The real question though is why only half the whale got eaten? Eyes bigger than your stomach, old Megalodon, my friend? If I was a gigantic shark and I was going after a whale, the least I would do is finish all of it. Couldn't finish your whale and wasted all that good blubber. There's starving sharks who don't have any blubber to eat at all. Try and be more considerate, please. Number two, Mega Nursery. Though the Megalodon might be renowned for its gargantuan size and prowess as a prehistoric apex predator, even terrifying mega sharks have to start somewhere small, right? Somewhere to get your little flippers and chompers some practice before setting your sights in the big open waters and big prey. Well, it's not quite an aquatic preschool, but it's the next best thing. Researchers from the University of Florida uncovered what they believe to be the world's first megalodon nursery located in Panama. The researchers found a shallow stretch of the Gatton Formation in which over 400 megalodon teeth fossils were collected. Most interestingly enough, though, was that the teeth in question were all greatly undersized compared to their usual finds on record indicating that these were most likely fossils from young megalodons trying out their training teeth and seeing how well they could bite. Mama megalodons would go here to have their babies, and from there, the baby megs could swim to their heart's content, picking off easy prey and getting some serious on-the-job experience before joining the workforce as a terror of the seas. It's a lot of fun actually trying to imagine a baby megalodon. Would it be cute? I feel like it would be cute. Ba baby anythings are pretty cute. I mean, a baby version of a 60-foot shark might still be a little bit terrifying. Who's to say it's not just like the size of a regular shark? Should probably be careful talking about baby sharks so much because the last thing I would want is for any of us to have to spend the rest of this video with a children's nursery rhyme stuck in our head, so we should probably press on. Number one. Now, as I mentioned before, all the way back in point number five, if you can remember, it's difficult to get down any research and hard data on megalodon fossils as they were mostly made up of cartilage, you know, the stuff like your ears and nose, so they didn't leave behind a lot of bones for us to pick through. And there's a reason you don't see that many shark skeletons in museums. Now what they do leave behind is their teeth, which I found pretty regularly, and in some very rare cases, their vertebrae. One of the best and most preserved megalodon fossils actually happens to be these vertebrae, which are currently chilling in the Royal Belgian Institute of Natural Sciences Conservatories located in Brussels. That's a bit of a tongue twister. Now, it's here that we got some serious scientific development on the megalodon. Recently, a CT scan of the vertebrae was able to reveal some very, very illuminating information. Number one being that sharks grow their vertebrae on in layers, just like the way trees add rings with age. So I guess the next time you and your friends all need to find out how old a shark is, just crack it open and count the rings. Please don't do that, I don't advocate for that. I mean, that's actually what they did here though. The scan had 46 rings in it, meaning the sample of the megalodon they had collected was 46 years old. Wow, I did not know there were middle-aged sharks. I would love to see a shark midlife crisis. Uh, if there's any way that editors can get a picture of a shark with a little middle-aged goatee here, I would love that. The most concerning part is that 46 is middle-aged for the megalodon, with scientists theorizing that the megalodon could have lived for up to 100 years or more. With that age in mind, the team could use the data to determine just how large their sample specimen was, multiplying the age by a growth rate, concluding that their young meg was 9.2 meters long, and the largest megalodons on record being up to 15 meters long. Absolutely terrifying. The research showed that baby megalodons would be up to 2 meters long, meaning they would be the size of a basketball player while they were still in their sharky diapers. There's the answer to the question I was asking before. I guess I didn't really want to know. Starting off at our list at number five is Deep Blue, the biggest great white shark ever recorded. Now when we think of a great white shark, our mind probably goes straight to the shark from Jaws, and there's gonna be a lot of Jaws jokes in this, so bear with me. And Jaws was intentionally sized up to give off a more monstrous appearance for the silver screen, a size no shark could possibly grow to. I mean, the average great white gets anywhere from 12 to 15 feet long, whereas old Bruce in the film was a staggering 25 feet. Well, meet Deep Blue, a great white shark who's 20 feet long, making her the biggest great white shark 
ever recorded. Despite her monstrous size, and I'm gonna be honest, no offense here, horrifying appearance, Deep Blue is actually pretty friendly and has even been recorded swimming with humans, even letting divers hold onto her fins for a ride. Now, you could explain to me for six weeks how it's safe to grab onto one of her fins for a swim, and I think I would still stay on the beach, thank you very much. Not sure how comfortable I'd be holding onto something that I know could eviscerate me by accident. Yeah, I guess I do own cats, so maybe I'm guilty of this already. Now, footage of Deep Blue is enough to make me a little queasy. Seeing the size of something this big swimming around makes me shiver. She's the closest thing we have on the Earth to the Megalodon right now and almost makes you wonder, is she 100% Great White or is Deep Blue a distant relative? A great, 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 great sharky granddaughter of the Megalodon. Is there some prehistoric blood throwing through those fins? I'd love to get up close and ask her, but you know, I, I did just eat half an hour ago, so I don't know if I should be going anywhere near the water, so I'll stay where I am for now. And hey, if you're loving the Megalodon content, I know you ghouls do, we've got oceans full of Megalodon videos for you to enjoy and explore on the channel, so get comfy, click through, and why not subscribe while you're here? Coming in at number 4 we have Something's Coming. Our next clip comes to us from TikTok user Horovitz. Hmm, Horovitz, top 5 scary, maybe we ought to collab. My people will call your people. I'm the people actually, so... Hannah will call you. <laughs> and true to their name, Horovid shares with us something spine chilling. Taken from the front of a boat, the camera spots something on the horizon swimming forward, creating a large wave as it goes. I can't repeat what the caption says, but just know it pretty accurately summarizes what I think most of us would be saying if we saw something this big hurtling towards us. As it's coming forward, it almost looks like it's a submarine dawning on the boat. Until you take a look over the side and get face to face with the absolute absolutely heaving unit of a shark swimming happily alongside them. The commenters on this video took note of this, with someone writing, that's a baby mega. Scientists estimate that baby megalodons would have been around 8 to 10 feet long at birth, so if anything, we're being underwhelming calling this thing a baby meg. Someone else writes, so megs aren't hiding anymore. Nope, they're done playing and they're letting us know they are here. It's hard to get a feel just from this clip, but there's no denying the shark is massive. Scary is still is how it disappears back into the water after rising, a scary reminder of just how deep the ocean's waters go, and just how far away from them I'd prefer to be. Now some commenters have suggested this could be a basking shark, a docile species of shark that avoids humans, but take a look at a basking shark's mouth and then tell me if you still trust that it's docile. Sure it only eats plankton, but I'm not taking any chances with something that's got a mouth that looks like a black hole. Number 3, the Mariana Trench sighting. Well, Filming in the Mariana Trench, a diver spotted something that would make many divers fill their wetsuit. The diver managed to capture footage of the creature that he saw and posted it online. The footage shows a very large predator shark swimming around near an abandoned shark cage. The size of the cage compared to the shark makes it obvious just how large the animal is. But what kind of shark was it? Well, once this video was posted online, commentators began to argue about that question, with several believing that the featured shark was a long lost megalodon. They went on to theorize that the supposedly extinct sharks have been surviving deep under water alongside the giant squids that live in the deep. Well, this is one of the more likely of the various megalodon theories. Others saw the footage of the shark and theorized that it was a, som a Somniosis pacificus, or a Pacific sleeper shark. The Pacific sleeper shark is a rather large shark, typically reaching a length of about 12 feet, with some of the largest examples reaching a full 23 feet long. They are both hunters and scavengers who feed using both suction and cutting. They can inhale their prey with their large mouths and then tear them up with their sharp teeth. Teeth. They tend to stick close to the bottom of the ocean, living up to 6,600 feet. They are known to eat large fish, crabs, or even octopus, but one large sleeper shark was caught and upon examination of its stomach contents was found to have been surviving almost entirely on giant squid which it had been consuming. For reference, the giant squid are typically known to reach lengths of 7 to 16 feet long. While the large 23 foot long sleeper sharks are impressive to look at and would be intimidating to get too close to, it is hard to mistake the shark in the footage for a megalodon, as they were known to be about 50 to 60 feet long, more than double the size of even the largest sleeper sharks. Number 2, the 1918 Port Stephens sighting. In 1918, a group of fishermen claimed to have seen a massive shark that they claimed attacked their gear before disappearing. This is the story as related by naturalist David Stead, who interviewed the fishermen. The men had been at work on the fishing grounds, which lie in deep water, when an immense shark of almost unbelievable proportions put in an appearance 
lifting pot after pot containing many crayfishes, and taking, as the man said, pots, mooring lines, and taking, as the man said, pots and mooring lines. These crayfish pots, it should be mentioned, were about 3 feet 6 inches in diameter, and frequently contained 2 to 3 dozen good-sized crayfish, each weighing several pounds. The men were all unanimous that this shark was something the like of which they had never dreamed of. In company with the local fisheries inspector, I questioned many of the men very closely, and they all agreed as to the gigantic stature of the beast, but the lengths they gave were on the whole absurd. I mentioned them, however, as an indication of the state of mind which this unusual giant had thrown them into. And bear in mind that these men who were used to the sea and all sorts of weather and all sorts of sharks as well. One of the crew said the shark was 300 feet long at least. Others said it was as long as the wharf on which we stood, about 115 feet. They affirmed that the water boiled over a large space when the fish swam past. They were all familiar with whales, which they had often seen passing at sea, but this was a vast shark. They had seen its terrible head, which was at least as long as the roof on the wharf shed at Nelson Bay. The measurements given by these men would indicate a shark twice the size of a megalodon, so I think we can assume that they may have been unintentionally exaggerating in their panic. If there was an attack by a shark and it wasn't a megalodon, what could it be? Due to its behavior of sucking up the crayfish traps, it very well could have been a whale shark. Similar to the megamouth shark, whale sharks, or rhinocodon typus, are filter feeders who feed mostly on plankton and small fish. They are no threat to humans, but are the largest species of sharks still alive today, being able to reach a maximum of 61 feet long, making them quite comparable, if only in size, to the megalodons of old. Number 1. Ironbound In 2019, marine biologists captured a large Carcharodon carcarius, or great white shark. They were trying to learn more about the elusive shark's migration patterns, so they attached a tracking device to the shark and set him free. Nicknaming him Ironbound, this 1,000 pound, 12 and a half foot shark had been tracked moving from Nova Scotia to New Jersey to Philadelphia. What does this have to do with the megalodon. As discussed earlier, both the great white shark and the megalodon are lamniforms. They are believed to share a common ancestor before evolution caused two subcategories, lamnidae and autodontidae. Lamnidae are a class of shark that includes the mako shark and the great white, whereas the autodontidae are an extinct family of sharks such as the ancestors of the megalodon, known as cretolamna, as well as the 15-foot megalolamna. There is also the evolutionary cousin of the meg, auto which were typically 30 to 40 feet long. So, while we may not have any solid evidence that megalodons or other prehistoric sharks still exist, we do have evidence that some of their DNA, from a common ancestor, lives on in the great white sharks that roam the ocean today. With that, our underwater journey together has come to an end. The dark forces that run this dimension have asked that I remind you to like, comment, and subscribe, lest they be forced to transport you to this dark void where you will be forced to make videos claiming to have proof of speed species that have been extinct for millions of years. The dark forces that run this dimension have asked that I remind you to like, comment, and subscribe, lest they be forced to transport you to this dark void, where you will be forced to make videos claiming to have proof of species that have been extinct for millions of years, saying that they are still alive. <laughs>